or the obvious connection between dubstep and dub of the 70s and 80s is the emphasis on the low frequencies. Dubstep is such a emotionless, like a um, man-made, you know, driven music. It's totally an opposite to what the early dubs were. Dubs of the 70s and 80s were actually um, based on songs. And it was, and you could feel that, you could feel that in the spirit of dubs. And you could feel that it's a product of um, multiple people, collaboration as opposed to modern dubstep, which you could feel is usually one person uh, giving his, his musical experience. You know, when we started, there was only one thing. There was only analog, when we started at the end of the 70s. And um, in those days, you had to really, not just be analog, you had to be somewhat of an electronics expert or have an electronic person when you have a studio because it relied so much on wires of electronics. Now throughout the 80s it's hard to pinpoint when the digital age really started because um, the name digital started to appear as early as like 1980, 81. You see devices saying digital delay, digital reverb. That was using a technique called bucket brigades, by, you know, and this was using a chip that was developed at the time, and it was a fascinating chip because it held the sound and leaked it, you know, stored it and then delayed it over, so you could make things like delays and reverbs and all kinds of strange sounds that we now associate it with early, it was like, what? The real digital age started with the advent of recording on another medium other than tape. And up until um, 1990 or so, 91, you only used tape to record. You, they had no hard disk facility and it was very expensive to even think of using hard disk. And it had all kinds of limitations. It didn't sound as good. The interesting thing about doing whatever you do for a long time is that people, you know people. Like many mainstream artists, I knew them before they were even mainstream. You know, you might know someone when they were like a tape boy or you might know someone when they're making the first demo. And you, and you associate them and your relationship grew over the years. Yeah, I'm always open for collaboration from the air. What they doing? We give it a try, you know. I'm always listening. Today, the bus coming down, one of the musicians is playing me some stuff that, you know, they want me to collaborate on. You know, it's, you know, you know I'm open. I, I always listen, you know. Black, white, English, Spanish, Latino. You know. we, 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 we consider everything, you know. The most important collaboration now is probably the one with Lee Perry. <laughs> and we worked for like 30 years. Yeah. And, uh, he's still a genius. I think um, there's a lot of things to be developed with music and, and vision, song and vision. I think it could marry more together. You could get um, some, some to light um, triggers and different things that could do things when a certain song is played. You know, there, there, there's a whole host of imagination things that could be done that um, both the film industry and the music industry could 
expand on, but don't. And you know, and, and I think a lot of modern manufacturers as well, they're not really working with the people who use the equipment. And that's one of the biggest problems we have. Do this tour, then Tuesday I go to Australia and I do some festivals in Australia and New Zealand and then I'm back to the UK. But I have no studio. There's a couple of remixes that we're doing, I can't remember. But I don't have no label projects at this stage. Hi, this is Matt Professor, I'm watching Music Clip TV. Thank you.